You're part of an elite fighting force now, Kogan. You can't just walk around with your insides on display. But look what I can do. Oh, I can't. Kogan, no. In a birth, but in reverse. See, that's exactly what I'm talking about. If you keep it up, I'm going to hammer fist. Oh, come on. Don't you think it's hard enough? Not being able to smell? Actually, it's your refusal to bathe that got me here. Oh. And you all feel like this? Absolutely. Yes. Right. Well, I guess that's that then. I'm sure one of our bone carvers can make you a selection of prosthetics. Oh, I'd like that. It's been ages since I picked my nose. You're How disgusting, Gorgon. Did you get a place in a sax of amazing? Stackard likes me. You'll do well together. No sense of smell for you. No taste for her. Cool tam, me loonoodies, who are mead? Welcome once again to the enormous rubber-walled room in which I wear my fetching jacket that we all call... Hammerlock. How was that for an intro? I caught the sacks of amazing conversing in the quills of sharing and couldn't believe my ears when I listened in. Imagine our hero Hammerfist having feelings for Kogan of all people. But it does explain his being assigned to the squad. Much better than the thought that they could use him as a walking quiver. Come in, Gainsborough. Hello, Mr. Crivis. Hello. Everything okay? Yes. I was just wondering if you wanted me to make you a sandwich or anything. I... Wait, you don't eat? In the normal use of the word, anyway. Do you even know how to make a sandwich? No, but I got sand. Can't be that hard to witch it. Lovely. I think I'm okay for food right now, thank you. Okay. I could get you some liquid. <sighs> I don't need a drink either, thank you. I know. Why don't you nip to the lounge for a reinforced stool and help me with the episode? Sure thing. Poor sod. Snod's been gone for a week at the Spell Olympics with his kobolds and Gainsborough can't stand the silence. I suggested giving the vacuum cleaner a cockney accent, but I guess he saw through my attempts to get him to tidy up. I must admit, I miss the many armed git too. The place just isn't the same without him whistling as he wreaks havoc. Back to Hammerlock, and I can promise we won't get much silence here today. I mean, no. Now, I know what you're thinking. The ancient Romans were pretty cool, but seeing as most of you are male between 25 and 34 years old, I'm a little disappointed in you for playing into a stereotype like that. <gasps> I want to go tickle the goblins in their pits again, and remember vaguely that somebody in the hazy attics wanted to travel, so we'll be keeping the nails at home. It's just that little village Vicerain that we've already turned over, so I don't suspect much trouble. We'll follow Avars out, yes Avars this time, rather than Avars or Avars. As you can see, he's focused! Doing much better in the attics than when he was roaming the halls moaning. Ah, even our own dwarves don't use the damn road. Maybe I can fiddle with the traffic areas. Knowing my luck, they'll see that and sprout wings. Nor take to the trees, like gibbons. I... At least they've proven they'll swing into action. No! Yes, as I said it, I realised... But it's okay, because I'm immediately punished. You know, I almost sent the nails out too. I did not know that, because you didn't tell me. No, I'm talking for the video. Adding spice to the situation by stating how much worse it could have been. Uh oh. And now we're going to follow the goblins this time. I've been struggling with the cinematography of sieges, and we've ended up missing a lot of the action in the past. 
Hopefully this method works, because it looks good and means less editing work. <laughs> Our warriors are ready and waiting. We even had time to post the sacks up on the barracks tower to shoot down. Yes, I think they're firing. Wonderful stuff. Oh, and the barricaded nails have attacked. Scything their way through goblins as bolts rain down. Good me, the carnage. Uh, following Risen now. It seems to be... Oh, no! They're sprinting off to the river. Uh, not sure what that was about. Oh, we've definitely still got goblins. Uh, we're following Dostan Gosp as she sneaks out? Crawls out? What on destiny is this? Where are the nails? The sacks have stopped firing. I think we're clear. Doing our usual hospital watch and it would seem we passed the siege unscathed. Wonderful. I will just say again that had I decided to send the nails out with the attics, I don't think the sacks would have managed. Could have been so much worse. I could have put my stool down the wrong way. What? That would have been worse. Oh, yes. Right. On account of the yes, link. Yes, yes. Thank you, Gainsborough. The hazy attics have returned. We're following Avaz in. No, not Avaz. Avaz. And he's hauling an iron breastplate so we can assume things went well. But let's take a look at the report anyway. Couple of Stozus faced and killed. One Estra defaced. Got his lip torn out. Yick. And seven further goblins killed. Then they looted and rampaged. Let's take a look at the spoils. Oh, the silver scimitar looks interesting, but the rest is junk iron and socks. Because there's nothing so alluring as something that spent months on a goblin's foot. Here's the scimitar. Actually not that interesting, just happens to be made from silver. Which is to cutting what jam is to structural bracing. Yes, well done anyway, hazy attics. At least you've put the fear of phlegm into the goblins. Now, with the increase in raids and sieges, I think I mentioned it would be a good idea to get some soap making on the go. Uh, that's what this soap maker's workshop is for. Well named, no? For this whole thing to work, I had to set up an ashery too, though it would appear I didn't deign to record any footage of that, so instead you'll just have to use your imagination. Uh, Mr. Crivis? Yes, I know. Do be so kind as to wield your imagination with some semblance of control. Returned wallet no money, the kobold snod has lent us, has a weak heart. She is also allergic to asparagus. Why is that relevant? I'm just showing how it could be worse for spiciness. Right. Moving on, and we're looking at the camouflaged college library, which by now should be filled with children. As you can see, the only things here are orangutans and, for some reason, war dogs. A reading up on their military history, I guess. <laughs> uh, to attempt to get them up here, I've decided to include the whole fort in the burrows. It'll be tight, and the second we see thirsty dwarves, we'll have to stop. But hopefully the kids will see everybody making their way up, and they'll follow suit. There we go. Now just have to wait. Okay, people have started trickling in. Good me, are they taking their time about it? Oh dear, we seem to have caught Durr before her nap. She's old, remember? If she doesn't get her midday nap, she won't have the strength to gossip all day in the sweetness of Rax. Oh, which is fair, after her stint as Fortress Mule. Wow, the place is really jumping now! Though, don't actually jump, dwarves. There's precious little holding this tower together, and it wasn't designed with this capacity in mind. Notice what there still isn't, though. Children. I mean, there's ape children, but no dwarves. Yes, this was a failure, too. 
I'm thinking this probably has something to do with our children being, well, children. Most dwarves don't respect a change of burrows whilst they're doing a task, so they'll carry on carrying their precious boulder and scurry to safety only after the job is complete. Our children don't have jobs. We turn them off. So they're playing, a task with seemingly no completion state. All I can do then is leave the burrows on and wait until they get hungry or tired. At which point they'll succumb to a narcoleptic famine in our library. I didn't think this through, did I? Anyway, the adults are getting thirsty, so we'll let them go free and I'll spend some time pondering the windless. Which is my new blanket term for trying to work this nonsense game out? Only kidding, Dwarf Fortress, you know I love you. Oh, and here you can see Avaz. That's, uh, well, yes, anyway. He's been crying at Moldeth on the roof above the farmer's workshops and we're watching him being coaxed down. Okay, which of you was thinking do a flip? Oh, who am I kidding? Probably all of you. The no! no, Gatesborough, it's not real, it can't hurt you. No, snod, damn it. Well, this is Orim Enna, anyway. I created it back when I heard the other name for this specific beetle. Ladybird. The thought that they might be packing feathery wings rather than insect ones tickled me, and I guess it was one of those released from the freezer by Snodford. Though I was sure this was one that he hadn't. If I check now, I bet I'll find Rocky Road where my beast should be. Don't mind me, Hammerfist, why? I'm going to have to blur all this out, you dirty little sods. Leading a milking demonstration. Is that what the kids are calling it these days? Ah. Well, I guess we know Kogan wasn't lying at least. Of all the things to do in the rosy sweetness. No, that isn't a euphemism. Get your minds out of the gutter, please. <sighs> oh, damn, another kobold. I will perform P-P-I. Gainsborough, wait, you mean CPR. And neither would be good coming from you. Ah, two moments. Right. Well, we've caught Moldath in a good mood. He's singing in the creative fragrances, which is always nice to see. Is it safe to come back in? Yes, Orim has gone now. Sorry about the door. Don't be. You're helping the workmen go on more holidays. Just sit down. <laughs> Moldeth is doing a splendid job as our Duke and Mayor. Never once letting the tears and screams of our grumpier individuals get him down. He did have a little wobble when Lightest found a lover, but that seems to be all behind him now. And he's so busy. Watching him, you can see why Lightest had to go somewhere else for her attention. I honestly never see him sit still. Such a diligent dwarf. And the elves are back. Following Rofa in here, who joins the two or three other traders we've had with actual trade-related skills. Uh, she also disdains artwork and decorum, but values craftwork. So her furniture can be improper and ugly, but it damn well better be of solid construction. Poor social awareness, too. So you just know she's one of those people who continually make fools of themselves for all to see for no better reason than they felt like doing it. Why are you looking at me? You looked at me. Yes, moving on. We got another book. The Dreams of Udil Lashland. Okay, maybe book was a little strong. It's an essay Udil has written about when she did a little mining a couple of years back. And clearly she hasn't reviewed this one because the writing is reasonably serious. The prose is not awful, but not very good either. <laughs> oh dear, Udil. 
And here she is, our hard-working little writer, pondering the windlass as she is wont to do. Now, Udil isn't the most upset of our dwarves here at Hammerlock, but I would still like to keep on top of her unmet needs. A lot of this, uh, fighting and martial training especially, is just not going to happen, but learn something? Really, Udil? Maybe if you spent a little less time pondering and more actually using the library, you'd deal with that one. No? Eh? Uh, then again, all the books are yours, so <laughs> I suppose not. Now take a look at that. Soap! Uh, don't be put off that it's called sheep soap. I'm pretty sure that's soap made from sheep, not soap for sheep specifically. Uh, pretty sure. But yes, this is just the start. Given how much animal fat we had lying around, I should think we'll soon have more soap than dwarves to watch with it. And rather excitingly, I read how it's possible to make things out of soap, so there's always the chance of some really weird artefacts. Can't wait for our first soap floodgate. We can install it before the hospital well, to purify the water supply. But that's how that works, right? Right, enough of that nonsense. Time for some more violence. Back to the goblin pits, and this time we're going for the head of the snake. Doomface. The goblin capital, if you can call it that. Oh, we're sending the barricaded nails, so I don't see it being a problem. Uh, despite the 200 population. Hmm. Well, anyway, we're following Erash as she uh, wanders around the fortress naked for some reason. I've told the dwarves to stay armed and armoured at all times, so I don't know what she's playing at. Still got things to pick up. Oh, hurry up and join the rest of the nails, silly dwarf. Moving over to Thaltig, we can see he's gone into a strange mood. Not as strange as that of our militia commander, of course, but strange enough to net us a new artefact. Thultig is an organiser, really, but a weaver and a clothier on the side, as it were. So I'd guess we're about to get an article of clothing. Points if you make a pair of shoes out of soap. <laughs> and he's made a knaf left mitten called Kors Distress, the cavern of playing. Ah, another traditional Ushildusim artifact. Not a mitten in the normal sense, hence why there's only one. These ceremonial items are used to help tame the giant cavern rodents that live beneath granite clobbers. The idea is to grasp your taming sausage with your left hand in the mitten for better grip and manipulation, thus leaving your right hand free for the rodent. It has been known for dwarves to swap hands, but what you gain in sausage control is lost in dexterity with the mouse. Oh look, he's stuck an icosahedral icosahedron to it. Got anything for that? I'd cos your hedrons. No then, no. Bertha's here again and he brings news from the outside world. Firstly, please let me only murder 25 trees. 40? No! <laughs> so, taking a look, it would appear the news he brings is that a powerful band of dwarves has taken it upon themselves to march on the goblin pits known as Doomface. You don't say, Betha. How incredible. Do tell us more, but do it from very far away. Is everybody outside this fort an idiot? No, who isn't an idiot? This happy little lime-faced fighter. This is, of course, Avaz, the one and only a few dozen more. As you can see, I wasn't lying when I said he's doing much better in the hazy attics. He still has unmet needs, including martial training and fighting, so I'm not sure what he's doing right now. Probably some sort of interpretive dance. I've been thinking that perhaps we should take him out of this high school drama class and into one of our squads, but he's the lead in the school play, and Coach McCoach name will never find a replacement in time. All joking aside, it is lovely to see him so unburdened by the hellish depression he endured. 
Well done, Evers. We were all rooting for you. The Lord no! stop over oh, the love of me. Ugosh Godum Ulfash, a scorpion with a dad bod. Why? Frankly, I blame the food industry. It had a six pack when I saw it last. And if you have to ask why I needed a scorpion with washboard abs, clearly you had less trouble with scorpioness Nika than I. Oh no, is that Nedom? My bloody brother's bloody bird again! Right, I've had enough of this. We don't have the nails, but the hazy attics will be more than sufficient. Get it, dwarves! Wow, it's taking a beating. And it's down. And everybody is throwing up. Oh, damn, but wait, it wasn't a dusty beast. Just had a poisonous sting. Oh, I hope this wasn't a terrible idea. Look at Inod. Stumbling around like he's 14 pints down and the night is old. And he's not the only one. Ah, uh, I just remembered. Neron took down that skinless salamander shed him. I bet you this is residual dust. Thank me we never met the salamander head on in that case. With everybody back into the fortress safely, we'll follow Avaz upstairs as he hopefully goes to get cleaned up. Oh my word, look at them all! No, don't wobble around the fortress, get to the hospital! Oh, yick, look at this dang mess! Where are you all going? It still says Avaz wants to clean himself, but oh snod damn it, the soap! Could have saved ourselves huge piles of vomit to clear up if I'd just made a stockpile in the hospital. Why isn't it kept in the coffers? Ugh, never mind. All clean now and look, content after the soapy bath. Another benefit to soap is that positive thought right there. And yes, yeah, see, as we watch Udib on his lonely vigil, Nedon was indeed coated in Shedim's frozen extract. And the barricaded nails have returned. We're following Meg in because I was preoccupied with Nedom and missed Erash. It doesn't seem to be carrying anything, so I guess there wasn't much to pillage. Uh, which is saying a lot, considering what the dwarves usually consider worth stealing. I think we'd better take a look at the report. Okay, Erash led the attack and Doomface's defense was led by... Oh dear. Goroth Neki Kigal, the mouse devil. A huge mouse twisted into human form. I didn't make this, not directly. Goroth is a primal being, something birthed by primordial tides, a consequence of my actions as I shaped the dimension of destiny. Imagine if it could breathe fire. Yes, thank you, Gainsborough. The attack went well at first. My dwarves against goblins, it's no contest. But once Goroth interfered directly, Avar's silver waded was the first to fall. Rizen, Mira Amazed, was next. Both torn apart by giant mousy claws. Then Abel faced the devil. It smashed her third toe on her right foot, then crushed her right hand before she could escape. But it seems she caused enough confusion to allow the rest of the barricaded nails to escape. Thank me for that. Oh, and here's Erash, safe and sound. Well, we certainly weren't prepared for that. Two dwarves and a handful of war dogs lost for absolutely no gain. Not only that, but now Hammerlock will be in Goroth's mousy sights. And those lidless eyes never close. Because they can't? Well, yes, but oh, shush, I was trying to be poetic. 
Oh good, Erash is getting naked again. Bloody dwarf. And here's brave Abel, just growing some hair real quick. And you can see, as she too gets naked, that she's completely healthy. I guess what happens in Doomface stays in Doomface. Anyway, that's going to do it for another fortnight. Abrupt, I know, but I have a feeling there's going to be retaliation from the mouse, and I don't think we can fit that in. So, yes. As we follow Bamis evading capture for the hundredth time, I shall thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe if you have the use of your fingers, and I'll see you next time. Anu Zeshon, you most wonderful of individuals. Anu Zeshon. Did I do a good job helping? Well, you destroyed my door, smashed a hole through my wall, and mocked multiple jokes. It was like Snod never left. Thank you.